Hi and welcome to the section on conics. So today we're going to start talking about conics. But the first thing I want to do is consider what is the history of conics. The first mathematicians to be interested in conics section were the ancient Greeks who were attracted by the beauty and symmetry of these curves. Later when, we, when the work of Kepler and Newton showed that the planets followed elliptical paths and it was surmised that some of the comets followed parabolic or hyper hyperbolic paths, the study of geometry of the conics became even more important. They're called conic sections because they are the cross sections resulting when a cone is cut. So here we can see there's a circle. Here we have the parabola and here we have the hyperbola. So if we just remain, remind ourselves of the shape, so a circle obviously is like this. When we're talking about an ellipse, an ellipse is like a circle but like a more of a squished circle. Um, our parabola and our hyperbola. So most of these, most of these you'll be familiar with, or something along those lines. So I'm doing this video in two sections because it is quite long. So what I need you to do is to do the following activity. It'll give you a greater understanding of when we talk about the terms dielectric, focus, and also some of the other things we're going to experience in this. So what we need to do is rule a line near the left hand side of a page and mark the point which will be our focus. From this line rule a series of lines one centimetre, two centimetre, sorry I should say three centimetres, four centimetres and five centimetres from the original line that you drew um, and has to be parallel to it. Sorry. Draw a series of concentric circles centred at the focus and the, with radii one centimetre, two centimetre and so on. So once you've done that, you mark the point where the first circle meets the line. Um, so one centimetre from the directrix, then the point where the two centimetre circle meets the line and so on. And a shocker. Thus the points should be equal distance from the focus and the directrix are found and a smooth curve through these points gives a parabola. So pause the video and have a go. So welcome back. We'll just go through briefly what it might, yours might have looked at. So what you did is first had a line. So draw it with a ruler and then you're drawing these lines that are equal distance apart. So that's our original line which we call the dielectric. And we've got one, two, three, one, two, three, four and five. We're then going to draw, so we chose this to be our focus for example. Um, we're going to draw circles. So the first one is going to have a radius of one centimetre and then we have one of two centimetres, then of three centimetres, and of four centimetres, this kind of thing. So it goes around and around. Okay, one, once we do this, we can mark the points where these cross. And you can see what's happening. We're getting the shape of a parabola. And so if we join these lines, so use a different colour, what we do is we get this parabolic shape. Now if I did it more accurately, it would probably be more accurate. So that's the first thing I wanted you to do. Now try it again, and this will take some time. So if the distance from the focus and the dielectrics are no longer equal, but in a fixed ratio to one another, a variation of this shape can result. So I want you to have a go and see what variations you can get. So this would involve to start with, so you mark the ruler line near the left hand side of the page and mark the points um, so that's a focus, four centimetres from the line. Rule a series of lines, so we're going to do these as one, two, three, four, all the way up to eight centimetres. So you're going to have lots of lines going down all the way to eight centimetres. Um, and draw a series of concentric circles again that follow the radio, not one centimetre apart because that's how far these lines were. This time try one half. And then we're going to do it again and again and again. You're going to draw multiple circles and then you're going to draw a dot with a line meet. And then try it again, but in instead, instead of having a half as the circles, try two and see what sort of shapes come up. So you're going to have to just pause the video for a fair while to be able to do this, but have a go. So welcome back. What we're going to do is look at your results. So there's a few kind of definitions that we need. So what you would have found is the locus of points Sorry, 
whose distance from a given fixed point, so that's the focus, so the fixed point is the focus, bears a constant ratio called the eccentricity to the distance from a given fixed straight line directory. So we're going to draw it. So here is our curve, here is our directrix, here is our focus. And any given, so this is our fixed points, and when we look at our, we're looking at any other point, so this is say xy, then the ratio should be the same, and that's what we're looking at. So what we found out, if we have a ratio of greater than 1, what is the result? So look through your what you've done. So what is the result? So greater than 1, what we get is a more of a hyperbola kind of shape. If it's equal to 1, we get a parabola shape. And if it's less than 1, well what we often get is a kind of a off like a ellipse, so rather than a circle. But the question is, what happens if it equals zero? If E is equal to zero, this is a special case, because what we get is actually a circle. So the other thing we need to know is about the lactus rectum. It's not a rude word, it's just what it's called. It runs parallel to the directrix and passes through the focus. So if the lactus rectum of our thing here would be a line over here. And it does have some special features. So the first feature that is in a, para in a parabola, it is four times the focal length. So that's, that's an interesting fact. In a circle, the lactus rectum is the diameter. And in an ellipse, it is 2b squared over a. Now I'm not sure if you're going to need to know that for your um, diagrams, but it is an interesting thing. So E is always a non-negative number, and we just discuss what happens if um, E is equal to, to zero. So obviously that's the case of the circle. Um, so you've got to think about why E is always non-negative, because things get smaller and larger. So if there is, is there only one focus and direction? Well, let's take the, the idea of an ellipse. Now this is a really, really interesting thing. So you look, we're looking again at the relative position of an ellipse, its focus and its directory. So we have one here, and say our focus is there. We can see that exactly the same locus would result by taking a focus and a dielectric on the other side of the ellipse. Similarly, similar, we have this with the hyperbola. So if we have a hyperbola that looks like this, and we have, we'll call S our focus, um, any hyperbola can be plotted using another point as a focus and another line as a directrix. So here, if this is our D, we might use a similar D, but we might have S dash. So there can be one more than one focus and directrix, but if you think of a parabola, we usually think of there is only one. So it's just something to consider. So what do you notice from the pictures you drew about the value of eccentricity and the shape of the curve? So um, eccentricity is the name we give to our ratio. So we know if we have an E value of 0, we have this kind of shape, which is a circle. If we have an E value of less than 1, well, we're moving to a more oval shape. If our E value is equal to 1, our circle opens up to give us a parabola. And if we have an E value of greater than 1, what we do is we have a hyperbola. So you can see that it's a kind of a nearly a measure of how circular something is. And the bigger it gets, the less circular we find. OK, so now we're up to part two. So I'm just going to stop the video and record the second part.